we have to talk about what happened over the weekend. So over this past weekend in Berlin was the Pan 15th anniversary at Berghain slash Panorama Bar. And I'm so upset that I wasn't there. Um, again, things came up last minute. I couldn't be able to go. And I'm, I'm going to be able to go to Berlin at the end of flipping November. So I'm really happy about that. But the Pan 15th anniversary lineup was absolutely incredible. Everyone was talking about it. It was really the kind of, you know, thing that was on the everyone's sort of like lips um, for the last couple of weeks when it was announced that Skrillex was another a special guest for it. And I was really interested to hear what people would say about Skrillex playing in, Ber in Bergheim because really, you don't really hear of a DJ like Skrillex, especially from the EDM side of things, uh, playing in a place like Bergheim because it's kind of known to be a little, I wouldn't say snobby, but it has a particular type of sound it kind of goes for, but it doesn't usually kind of cater to that kind of mainstream type of an artist. But Skrillex nowadays, I think has kind of earned, um, you know, has kind of got his stripes in the industry, obviously being a, a crazy great producer, but has also kind of been able to kind of give him respect to his ability to kind of be able to play with, with underground and also overground. He can kind of do both things at the same time really really well to a really high level so i think a lot of people were curious to see what skrillex going to be able to bring his level or his type of sound to bergheim and do a good job or would he kind of acquiesce and kind of change his sound do it somewhere else people were kind of really weren't really sure what was going on there but the lineup itself was absolutely crazy um the final lineup itself that was on there um, as you can see people like amnesia scanner that was playing there you got crystal measurement skrillex arca playing there also you got juliana huxley ball um in nanjuja playing there. object use timor who i'm a big fan of uh, again i'm curious to see what he played in in terms of music because he was playing in the panorama by the house room but the 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 place was packed from what i've heard um i've seen videos and clips of people basically queuing up and it looked like the queue was stretching from the front of berkheim all the way until there's like a little retail park type of area thing next to the station that's quite near to Berghain. so basically the queue was going from the front all the way until that kind of like retail park car park area where there's sort of like hardware stores and shit which is a really long way if you've been to Berghain, you know how far that is so the queue was absolutely crazy i heard people were waiting upwards of like seven hours in the queue and of course because it was so crazy because it was so crazy people were fucking cutting the line People were cutting in the queue, which is really sad and unpleasant. But I think that's kind of the situation that happens a lot with these kind of busy sort of events. But I do have a couple of clips here that kind of show you the length of the queue that was outside. They can kind of tell you, uh, give you an idea of how long um, people were waiting to kind of go inside here. I've got these kind of clips here, courtesy of Instagram. So as you can see here from this picture, the club is somewhere around here. So this is really long. This is a really far away. Basically, the club is somewhere around here. So it's like a... This is like a easily a hundred plus people deep. But I'll play the clip for you so you can see how long the queue was. The queue was absolutely meaty. It's wrapping around all the way until the end. I'll end of the road where the metro sign is and then wrapping back around again. So can you imagine what it must have been like for tourists going to Bergheim for the first time, jumping out of a taxi and then having to walk, jumping out in front of the club and then having to walk all the way to the back <laughs> next to where the fucking metro sign is to go and stand in the back of the queue that's how long it was it was snaking all the way around like this absolutely crazy amount of people that were there and again unfortunately um there was a lot of line cutting as well happening which i guess happens a lot with people when it's a busy night out and and again you can see a little bit of it here too i need to mute the sound here because this person played a fucking cannibal corpse tune here so i'll probably end up getting taken down with copyright if i leave it playing too loud but this is obviously another image too of the queue and how busy it was. Look at that. Sound a bit there. As you can see there, look how long that is. All the way at the end. And one of the only annoying things about the Bergheim queue and why it gets so long like this is the fact that um usually it's kind of a single file type of queue. But when it gets this type of when it gets really this busy, you you what you'll see, you see a lot of people just run to the front. So you'd be standing there and someone just standing right next to you and just cut the queue. And for me personally, I never accept that shit. I'll call people out. I'll tap them on the shoulder and tell them to get to the back. Like I'll get into fucking heated arguments. I'm not about to let anybody cut in the queue. And I think a lot of people, for some reason, 
are so afraid of the Bergheim thing and not getting let in. They're so scared of not getting let in that they don't want to have a confrontation. But me personally, I'd much rather have the confrontation and have somebody get, you know, tell someone to get to the fucking back. And then when I get to the front of the queue and, and they ask me, hey, why are you arguing in the queue? I can explain and say, hey, I was queuing it for six hours. If I try to cut in and then if they decide to let me in, cool, if they don't, whatever it may be. But I'm not about to stand there for six hours and let some fucking scrub just jump in front of me because I'm worried I might not get in. It's not that serious of a club. Obviously, it's serious enough to stand there for six hours, but I'm also not letting anybody take advantage of me and let me cut in front. I've never, ever done that. But people sometimes, you know, I understand when they get a bit worried. But the queue itself was absolutely crazy. As you can see, there's no such thing as a single file here. Everybody's standing next to each other, really on top of each other. Um, you know, there's no idea who's first, who's second. And you really have to kind of have a lot of patience to be able to put up with all of this especially in the cold especially in the rain and be there and enjoy all this sort of good stuff it really is fucking crazy so big up the guys and girls that were able to do so personally not for me personally not for me so i went to quickly also see some reviews of what was happening so i did take a couple screen grabs from the fucking lovely 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 berghain community subreddit where people kind of made their reviews about the Skrillex playing there, because I'm really curious to see how Skrillex played at Bergheim Panorama Bar, right? So this is courtesy of the Bergheim community subreddit, and it says as follows. It says, um, Skrillex, how was it? This person says, I thought it was entirely shit. <laughs> Skaven review. I was ready for him to rise to the occasion for this artist arc to materialize with groundbreaking, interesting, well-constructed set. Instead, we got a cheap frat boy hodgepodge of tunes, which made me cringe. He played some flow down stuff, which sounded great on a sound system, but it comes moments after hearing a crap. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard remix, followed by why they hide their bodies under my garage. All he did was take his Coachella set with Forte and Fred again, added some um, dated Blauan and stayed off the table and microphone. Thank Christ. Another person called Bear Claw, who I think might be a DJ. I think Bear Claw might be a DJ. Um, they replied and said as follows. Were you even there? First of all, it was actually Crystal Mess um, who played uh, my Milkshake remix, not Skrillex. And she played heaps of drum and bass as well, which I thought was very, very cool. The set was more leaned into techno club heavy mixing of songs. He played songs for uh, Xena, Badass, Inhale, XL, Fine Day's Anthem, a remix of Rumble, but no, not but nearly nothing of the more light mooded and commercial songs he has no dubstep early day skrillex no jack you etc i loved it the vibe was off the charts and the whole floor had a great time my sister works at berkheim and was a bit skeptical but she told me she was impressed that pan overall was a very good night out to have witnessed now this is a perfect antithesis of what's happening at berkheim people just in general are just so close-minded they really are in uh, what I've noticed, especially in Berlin or in Berlin in general, the vibe over there, they really only want a particular type of sound. That's why I kind of understand why LSD XOXO was going off on people. Don't get me wrong. He went a bit too far. He was kind of basically, you know, accusing Berlin customers of being fucking racist and homophobic, which is absolutely insane. But I understand what he means about the club not being fun right about them only wanting a certain type of music because i know having been there how people negatively react on the dance floor if you play too many vocals honestly Bergheim main floor if you play too many vocals people get annoyed if it's too commercial they get annoyed if it's too light they get annoyed like all they want is like four to the you know four by four you know walls to the wall balls to the wall 130 bpm plus dark dark tank no no groove no nothing just boom 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 over your head and what I liked about the pan night is that the bookings, especially with Skrillex, just made it more interesting. You know, they made it more interesting. They made it more interesting. They made it more interesting. And it really is a shame that they don't do more of those things more often. And again, it's more of a pan thing to get Skrillex involved. But I would love to see them do more of these type of bookings where you get a really commercial person who you probably wouldn't expect to play at Bergheim to play there. And then you kind of set them the challenge of trying to appease that Bergheim crowd by kind of doing their own thing, but also matching the vibe there. I think it would kind of keep it fresh because there's only so many variations of that dark techno sound that you can have in one space before it gets a bit boring. So that's kind of a good representation of what was going on there. And then we've got another review here that says, I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed his set. He mixed various genres together while always coming back with good techno and dubstep and kept the pace interesting throughout. He had many loud ov ovations from the crowd and personally thanked him for a great set when he crossed paths in Pano. I would definitely like to catch his set again. 
Another person says, I saw 50 minutes. Um, it was truly okay. Negative shout out to the guy who yelled, Skrillex is killing it in the line after exiting the club. <laughs> that is some top shit, top uh, shit house ribbing up that guy. And the last person here says, I had a really good time. I came in 10 minutes late, but then stayed for the whole time. The crowd was versatile. There was also quite some, there was a lot of bros in the club, but I saw that coming before and was mentally prepared for it. I, I, I hate how, for some reason, this techno scene has such an issue with what you deem it to be technically like straight guys. There's such a weird tension between it. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure why there's such a weird tension between like the LGBTQ queer gay side of guys and just the Chad bro types who want to go to these parties. I thought it was free space for everybody. Why can't we all just live kind of free and easy amongst each other? Why there's be so much attention? Like you don't want to fuck them. They don't want to fuck you. What's the problem? Just to coexist. It's not that big of an issue. Like I was so nervous because of the bro energy. It's like, bro, come on, man. Anyway, who cares? Um, However, my friend got hit in the head by an idiot trying to headbang <laughs> and that kind of sucked. The set was versatile and the vibe was a bit harder and less bright than his RSO set in June. He played a lot of techno, but also a lot of bass music, stuff from his new albums, some rap mixed in. The transitions were often quite quick and included surprising genre switches, making it very entertaining to listen to the set for the whole time. In general, it was exactly what I would have expected. A great mix of techno, bass, some fun tunes that some people might call cringe which i definitely um is a personal opinion i liked it it was well balanced and there was no moment where i thought it was going to become cringe so again it, it, various replies some people are saying it's shit some people are saying it's amazing i personally think from what i can gather with reading people online it was a bit refreshing to have but again people are very close-minded especially over there in berlin maybe even more so here in london uh, i always thought the london scene was a bit close-minded but i think the berlin guys definitely do trump us but I also understand what they mean because I've never seen this amount of videos uploaded from Bergheim on the inside. Again, they usually cover your camera anyway, so you're not going to see anything from these videos, but people were recording clips of like tunes and stuff or the whole set. I think one particular person recorded the entire set of Skrillex playing there via audio, but I think it got taken down on YouTube. So that type of energy only happens when you book certain people. So that's the issue that Bergheim have. Like if you book certain DJs, they do invite a certain crowd of people who might spoil the sanctity of the club and what the whole vibe is about, right? I understand what they mean by it. But some of the clips are quite interesting because you get an idea on the kind of vibe that was going on there. And I guess as I searched here via YouTube, you can see a couple of clips here people uploaded of Skrillex playing. And one in particular here, people were going absolutely crazy for, I think was this one, um, which says it's a new ID featuring a song by a person called Hamdi. It's called Accounting Remix. This is courtesy of Bergheim too. This user called Outsider who uploaded this clip as well. And these clips are racking up many, many views on YouTube. So clearly yeah, the energy in there was pretty good. Let's play this clip here. Oh shit. Hamdi, no? Hamdi counting. Yeah. If you want some more. Hamdi. Oh, oh. I'm perfect. I'm not gonna lie, man. Hearing that sort of stuff on the burger and sound system must have been so good. Come on, man. Like, I know it's not something that you might listen to in your everyday life. If you're not into EDM, I get it. If you're a bit snobby, I get it. But still, listening to that kind of music on that Berghain sound system must have been quite refreshing to hear that sort of stuff. Like, that sounds fucking hard. This is recorded through a fucking phone and uploaded onto YouTube. The quality is fucking terrible. But I can imagine what it probably must have sounded like if you were there. But one of the interesting things I loved about it was this review. I've got this other review that I clipped from fucking the Burger and subreddit. This guy's review is absolutely incredible, right? Because it features this really interesting bit about Arka. Because Arka also played there. And Arka's a fucking legend. Look at this review. This part of the review made me fucking laugh. This is courtesy of the Burger and subreddit. 
Um, and it says the following um, regarding Arca, right? It says, as soon as I got into the dance floor by the bar entrance, I can see her playing some experimental tribal stuff, something in the sound of COP32 or space drum meditation to name something. Then some hyper pop pads with chipmunk voices. And all of a sudden, she cuts some music to ask for a Moscow Mula and the water because she's thirsty and needs it. And if you know anything about Bergheim, you'll know that these guys absolutely hate it when DJs get on the microphone, which is annoying because a lot of techno's roots, a lot of house music's roots are kind of rooted in DJs using the microphone to kind of like, you know, drum up the crowd and introduce songs and stuff and just fuck around. Right? I think of people like Moody Man, all these type of people that would play that sort of way. But in the Berlin in nightlife electronic dance music scene they absolutely hate it when DJs get on the microphone so the fact that Arca was able to get on the mic and request a Moscow Mueller <laughs> and a water right <laughs> in between her playing the sets and that people going absolutely crazy for it. it was absolutely great I wish I could have seen that um it continues here um Moscow Mueller and water because she's first and needed it the music plays again for five minutes quite same vibe cuts again to ask for a Moscow Mueller and the water either way the way she does it was so funny and authentic that I laughed my ass off quite hard during its interruptions the music again was with Cardi B Burnak Yellow mixed in with some different textures and pads to make it more intense uh reggaeton Kuduro Dembo Industrial Techno Jersey Club um and obviously my personal favorite DJ Slink put your back in it um, a lot of breakbeat and experimental beats um, with ups and downs and BPMs. If Again, if you know anything about Berlin, you'll know that these guys absolutely detest breakbeats also. So I can imagine some of the purists, some of the chin strokers there were having such a fucking weird moment because they all love Arca. They love how experimental and how interesting and wide ranging of an artist Arca is. But also those genres are like Berlin kryptonite dembo kaduro reggaeton like imagine alka playing fucking bad bunny and shit on that dance floor. people are probably thinking oh my god i want to leave but it's also arka so i want to stay because i know it's going to get interesting so that's all really really funny to me in that kind of vibe but i would have really loved to have gone to be fair because i think that type of music to play in that sort of space was be a little bit more interesting than the usual shit you hear there and then there was actually this song that i want to actually get a tune id from that i actually got from instagram stories of arka i don't know what this is I'm not too sure if this is an, a soundtrack from an anime, if this is maybe something else, but I heard this being played at Berkheim with Arca, and I wonder what this was. Can the, If anybody knows what this is, please let me know in the comments, because this sounds fucking incredible. Arca played this during the time there at Pan 15th, and it sounds absolutely phenomenal. Again, I'm not sure if it's an anime soundtrack, I'm not too sure if it's something else, but whatever it is, it sounds fucking magical. <laughs> sounds so good i don't know what i don't know what it is honestly i think maybe because i'm i'm in the anime mood because i was watching um what you call it i was watching a lot of fucking ghosts in the show recently so maybe that's why it made me kind of think of it but i don't really know what the track is but it's absolutely phenomenal arca played the um during a set there at Berghain. and again just imagine that and the Berghain sound system just imagine that type of tempo playing there i've heard reports of people playing you know 80 bpm 90 bpm on the main dance hall so people were probably a little bit didn't know what to do with their whole bodies while they're out there but it sounded interesting and i honestly do think this is the whole reason why Berghain still for me is one of the best clubs in the world because of that ability to have those type of DJs, those type of artists playing that sort of space, playing those type of mu playing that type of music, playing those type of tempos, those type of sounds, and basically challenging the customers to be a little bit more open-minded. Because I think that's one thing that's a little bit of 
uh, a sad thing to see about the scene over there as great as it is with the times and the fact that you go to so many different places and you can basically see a, a whole slew of djs some of the best people in the world playing there i think sometimes the sounds and the tunes played can be a little bit you know samey samey because the punters really only want to hear one thing unfortunately but it sounded great sounded amazing i'm really am hopeful that i'm able to go there probably next time and like i said before i'll probably be there sometime at the end of november i will be there sometime at the end of november i cannot wait 